Okay, we're going to get into uh, plotting the or calculating the total full free energy, total Flory Huggins full free energy uh, of mixing for polymers. So that was a um, alliteration F mouth, <laughs> mouthful. Uh, still can't get it out. Anyways, so we figured out our delta H of mixing. We figured out our delta S of mixing. All molar quantities you see in here. So the full free energy um, of mixing is just going to be again our enthalpic term H mix here plus our delta S term, delta S mixing right here. So this is our full flurry free energy for uh, mixing. Again, we still have kind of this chi parameter here, and we could, if we know um, some of the solubility parameters, we can actually calculate that explicitly here. Always kind of be wary of this expression uh, that we have at our hand. So um, remember, X1 is the degree of polymerization of polymer species 1 or species 1. X2, degree of polymerization of polymer species or species 2. So there are going to be three different um, kind of scenarios that we're typically going to be working with. So one is solvent-solvent. So you'll see that if we have solvent-solvent, this is effectively a degree of polymerization of 1, monomer-monomer, gas molecules. This is just basically working as our Bragg-Williams theory. Nothing is different, uh, and we'll kind of see similar uh, phase behavior. Um, you can see here, uh, we also have a scenario of mixing solvent and polymer, where X2 is large. Again, we'll say that N, our total number of you know, molecules, uh, or number of, excuse me, number of monomer units, that's going to vary typically between you know, 10 and 100K uh, for a lot of scenarios. And we can mix polymer-polymer. So X1 and X2 can be large, and we can have a situation where X1 equals X2, symmetric, or X1 does not equal X2. And we're going to see some, again, some really, really kind of different um, behavior in our uh, basically free energy diagrams. So uh, if you look back at our presentation, uh, we can kind of see, again, you see the similar, these are just kind of nice derivations, uh, our three different scenarios. So scenario one, two, and three, we'll come back to those a little bit later, not come back, but we can visually see, uh, that's just more equations. These are typical mixing scenarios. So again, small molecules, polymer and a solvent mixing, and then polymer, polymer mixing. And again, the key thing is this delta S mixing. It's this. It's the same thing as uh, your Bragg Williams S mix divided by this X1 and X2. And it's just that again, you know, our number of polymers, our our inch, our basically our entropic push for mixing is less because you could look at the number of molecules that I could fit on the lattice versus the number of polymers. So that's kind of what's taken into account. So we're decreasing. Um, we're decreasing because you know the translation is just this one single unit. As whereas here. This guy can move here, this guy can move here. There are a lot, um, the number of microstates is less once we kind of include these huge polymers that we are working with uh, and kind of dealing with here. So uh, we're going to see in a second, uh, this is kind of a couple schematics of the Flory Huggins polymer mixing um, as a function of chi. So you can see here that this minus T delta S term, our delta S of mixing, again, never depends on chi. It's always going to be uh, pushed towards mixing. So actually, let's let's look at this for just a second here. Um, what I'm going to do is let's plot, for example. Uh, so what I have defined, so we have our delta S of mixing right here, the Bragg-Williams right here. And all we're going to do, I'm going to define my Flory Huggins is going to be FH minus T delta S. So that's all that we're... Uh, kind of working with here. So going back to this, very similar to this expression right here. So minus T delta S, again, it's just going to give you uh, kind of those parameters. So once I plug that in, I get this expression right here. And now I can plot my Flory Huggins full free energy right here. All I'm doing is taking this expression and copying and pasting it uh, into here. So this is my full free energy diagram. Uh, you can see here, negative values. Uh, and I can change now some of these parameters and see what my curve looks like. So if chi, I'm going to flip my screen here for a second. Remember, now this is a free energy curve for mixing. So this is saying that if I'm along this curve, I want to mix my polymers or my solvents or whatever is happening here. So you can see here, I'm in the first scenario where I'm just mixing molecules. So if my chi is minus one, it really, again, all the values are negative here. If it is positive one, I see, again, still negative everywhere, right? The curve is uh, concave up, 
my second derivative is greater than zero, I'm stable. Hopefully you remember some of those terms. But once, and you can see kind of again, your axes will change a little bit, uh, the magnitude changes, but again, you see it's still, the shape of the curve is still is concave up. But once I start to get to about two, you see kind of, I reach this point where this curve starts to flatten here. And if I do 2.1 for a chi parameter, again, as I increase chi, it's saying that one and two species don't want to be next to each other. Now I start to see basically these locations where I have a common tangent. Um, and these common tangents are actually the value of this slope here, between here and here, is zero. But we'll, we'll get to that. We'll prove that a little bit later on. You see here, if I increase it, I can really start to see kind of this, this you know, these common tangent areas. And so hopefully you remember back from, and we're going to show, we'll do, draw a couple little schematics in a second, but uh, hopefully you remember from material science that when I have a common tangent, basically there's a lower free energy state. If I'm sitting here, if I want to be mixed, I can lower my free energy by going to this common tangent. So in this common tangent, basically I'm phase separating. My uh, solvent one is going over here, my solvent two is going over here, I'm being completely phase separated because I can lower my free energy. So we'll draw that in a second uh, a little bit out, but you can see once I cross this kind of um, magical value of two, and we'll prove this mathematically in a bit, then I start to kind of phase separate. If I do three, you know, or four, you know, you really start to see kind of these uh, changes in free energy. So uh, material basically wants to be from here to here, I always wants to be separated. Now, let's see what happens. I'm going to do a value of one. What happens when I do, say, mix a polymer? So, this 100K. Actually, let me let me have Z or chi be zero. Um, so, right here, again, I'm not symmetric. Uh, and again, we saw this. This is due to, again, you know, again, the definition um, and from our entropy contribution as well. So, I'm not symmetric, but again, I'm still concave up here. Uh, if I have a chi parameter, uh, and we'll see uh, how to get kind of this magic number uh, where we find uh, basically that this chi is uh, falling at a particular value, I could find, as I increase, let's say I increase my chi to like 1 over 10. Still there, so 0.1. How about let's do 0.5. Still concave up here. Actually, yeah, let's do. Let's do a value of one. So now I'm starting to kind of see these different uh, basically common tangents. So actually there's a common tangent between here and here. So basically everything between here and here, again, I, you see kind of this change in curvature and that kind of denotes this common tangent uh, and you'll kind of find out these magical values as well. So you see basically everything here uh, does not want to mix. So again, there's a lower free energy state. If I could draw this common tangent, it does not want to lie on this mixed curve. If I'm at this energy in the mixed curve, there's a lower energy state if I have that common tangent. Um, I can also find, if I have a symmetric polymer, so let's say I have a, something that's 100, 100 here. So let's say, let's say my chi is uh, 1. How about 1 divided by 200? So you see now, my chi is low enough. I am still, everywhere wants to be mixed. But once I go to a chi of 1 divided by 100, who I start to flatten out a bit, what about 1 divided by 50? Uh-oh, I'm really flattening out here. What about uh, here, where I can go from 10? Now I'm starting to see uh, kind of some value. So 0 0.1, about 0 0.05. Again, you can see we really start to shift. Everything here does not want to mix. So let's do 0 0.5. One again, so about point oh two, point oh five, point oh one, point oh two. So you're going to start to see again the trend here, and you could see the flip. You could see where the flip occurs. Uh, so now you can, you know, again, really kind of imagine uh, how you're working with uh, definitely these uh, these different polymeric materials. So from here to here, again, free energy. You look at here, we're symmetric as well. So when you're dealing with symmetric polymers, your free energy curve is kind of symmetric. These uh, points, these common tangent points, these binodals, hopefully you remember that, uh, are going to occur at when the slope is equal to zero. But anyways, you can see between here and here, we are completely phase separated. We do not want to rely on this free energy mixing curve. Uh, we instead want to be in a scenario where we demix. So uh, let's take a step back and hopefully remember some material science. Um, uh, I'm going to draw a little bit right here. 
So let's go back to uh, over here. In material science, hopefully, you encountered a phase diagram like this. How much I'm going to do my draw like this. So temperature typically versus some mole fraction xb, which is going to be very similar to our basically phi b or phi two, phi one, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe you found a lens diagram where I was liquid here, and then in between here I was solid. So I have the solid plus liquid two phase region, right? And if I wanted to kind of say, okay, draw draw the free energy curves um, for my liquid and solid region at these different temperatures. Uh, Let's say this is T2, and this is T1, and this is T3. At T1, my free energy curves look like this. So in T1, what state am I in right here at this temperature? I'm all liquid. So my liquid should be like this. My solid should be somewhere up here. Lowest free energy wins. So for all compositions, XB, I will be in the liquid state. We'll come back to T2 in a second. Let's do T3. What about T3? Well, the same thing holds, right? Solid, uh, that's my equilibrium state. It's solid everywhere for all compositions. So lowest free energy always wins. Now, the interesting scenario happens at these kind of special contributions. I call this one, call this two. When I cross, hopefully you remember, liquidest line here, solidest line here. So when I cross one and two, I'm going to have a little bit of a different uh, something happening. So before I cross, uh, to one, what state am I in? Solid. So my solid free energy is like this. So it's low. On the other side, uh, before I get to two, I am uh, what? In this region over here. I'm liquid. So here my liquid is low. And over there my solid is going to be high. So in between one and two, I'm in this two phase region where solid and liquid exist um, in equilibrium. I have a two-phase region, so I'm saying that my uh, chemical my chemical potential. Hope you remember this expression. We're going to go through it in a second. Dn uh, as a function of temperature, pressure, you know, uh, uh, different variables. My chemical potential. I'm in equilibrium in the liquid phase is equal to my chemical potential in the solid phase. So if I have a common tangent, you could see here that this is a function of xp. Xp is effectively n here. So if my two phases are in equilibrium, given by this expression here. It means that the slope of my free energy curves in these phases are equal. So if my slopes are equal, it's saying that between this point and this point here, where I'm in equilibrium, I have a common tangent. So there is a curve here where between this point and this point, my slope in this phase and the slope in this phase is the same. So I have a common tangent line right here. So there's basically a, um, a free energy state here where I'm not in the pure solid phase, I'm not in the pure liquid phase, instead, I'm in a two-phase region. So, once I've crossed these points, I don't want to be pure solid anymore. There's a lower energy state. I could drop down into here and lower my free energy. The same thing for the liquid. There's a lower free energy state. I don't want to be pure liquid. Instead, I want to fall on this common tangent line, and I want to be in equilibrium. I want to be in a two-phase region. So, the same thing is going to hold for what we're working with here. So as you can see in our presentation, once I find, this is my free energy curve for mixing. So here, everywhere wants to be mixed. There's no common tangents. Everywhere we want to be on this line. This is our lowest free energy. We want to be on this line as well. But once we get to here, this chi of three, there's a common tangent here and here. So if I draw a common tangent line, I don't want to be mixed anymore. I want to drop down to a lower free energy. This is my demix state. This is my phase separated state. That's the critical idea here. This is a free energy curve for mixing. I can lower my free energy once I have a common tangent. Basically, that my two species are in equilibrium in this kind of demixed state. That I can lower my free energy that way. I don't want to be mixed anymore. I can lower that free energy to that common tangent. So I'm going to generate basically a phase diagram at high, you know, as a function of phi phi two, where at certain temperatures, again. Uh, I will be either mixed or demixed. So at low temperatures, you'll kind of hopefully see uh, the equation form like so. So at low temperatures, should I be mixed or should I be demixed? It should be demixed. So you're going to see a curve kind of look like this. It can be shifted, it could be symmetric. 
So high temperatures, I should be mixed. Again, our entropy dominates and here D mixed. And we're going to figure out what temperatures, or equivalently, we could also plot this as a function of chi, because uh, we know that chi is inversely related to temperature. So D2, you'll see this curve flip. Why? Because low chi values, what does that mean? It means high temperatures. Uh, or equivalently, low chi values mean that 1 and 2 like each other. At high chi values, they hate each other. So they're going to demix in this region here. Oh, more on that in the next video uh, and in uh, several videos ago, but hopefully that was a nice crash course in uh, kind of remembering some of the material science and phase diagram material. We're going to look at many, many more examples uh, coming up soon. So thanks, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye.